Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. All right, there's my warriors. Any more warriors out there? Sold out for Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, what an exciting day we had at church this morning. The Lord gave me a word about the chains, and people came, and chains fell off. Hallelujah. We had an altar call, and I mean, a gentleman walked out of there healed. He came in with a cane, left the cane. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry about that. We're a little late today. Didn't get our podcast in this morning because didn't want to be late for that service, that church service. Amen. But here we are, and we're going to go back into the book of Revelation, answering what's going around on the Internet. We're looking for a solar eclipse. There's supposed to be in three of them, and one falls on a Jewish holiday. Well, we're going to go back through the signs and disprove that last day prophecy, as it was called. Amen. It didn't come from God. Amen. They may have heard a voice. Amen. But we're looking because they claim that Jesus said there would be signs in the sky. Well, we're looking at those signs. And not one of them is an eclipse or three eclipses, as they claim. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't see how you're going to get repentance from a dark, broken world like this from an eclipse, even if it falls on a... <laughs> 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 even if it falls on a Jewish holiday, okay? That's not the signs that Jesus declared in this word that we would experience in these last days. Oh, Yeah, and they said that we're going to be raptured next month. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Anyway, we'll get into that word in a minute. Let's get to this prayer list and just thank God. Thank him for another day, another opportunity to do his work, his will, his way. Another day to see his mighty and miraculous hand move in our lives and situations and circumstances. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. A shout out to all of you YouTubers that are following us on YouTube, all of our Facebook family, friends, relatives, and loved ones. Amen. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, uh, you just want to chat something out, something on your chest, you want to get off, I'm available. Come over to Facebook. Amen? Search Rev Eddie Wiggins. Now, Rev Eddie on Facebook is one word. It is, uh, there's no space, no dash, no dots, no periods, just Rev Eddie <laughs> Wiggins. And message me. We'll exchange numbers. Amen? And that way we can talk it out, uh, chat it out, cry it out. Shout it out if we have to. You know we're going to pray it out. And all the while knowing in our hearts that almighty God, our all-powerful mighty God is going to work it out. Amen. (laughs) Thank God for each and every one of you that have been following. Uh, You're the best part of this ministry. Know that in your hearts. A shout out. To our favorite island, the island of Mindanao in the, in the Philippines and all the beautiful people there all the way from uh, Dipalog City up into those mountains, Dipatan City, Palanco, Barangay, District 1, 2, and 3. We thank God for all of you. We thank God and we need to lift up in prayer our favorite DJs, Joe Ryan, and the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. And Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love. And it's time for the healing hour on the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. We need to keep the Mighty Mix FM and these two DJs 
lifted up in our prayers. They are just in, on fire for the Lord. God's doing a thing through the Mighty Mix FM. And I just thank you, Joe Ryan. Thank you, Woody Boy, for taking a podcast like this, turning it into a broadcast, lighting it up with your radio station with fire, Holy Ghost fire, and sending it out through the airways into the ears and hearts and minds and spirit of all the beautiful people that your station is able to reach. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Keep Pastor Nelia lifted up in your prayers over there in Dipalog City all the way up into the mountain. Just on fire for the Lord, sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ, looking for the lost that they may be found and will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's keep Charlotte and Dale and Murray lifted up in their prayers. Amen. Over there in beautiful downtown Australia. Amen. Just on fire for the Lord, doing a thing for the Lord Jesus. We just thank God for you. We thank God and we want to keep lifting up in our prayers Minister Deborah Atwell down there in that beautiful island of Trinidad. Amen. Just on fire for the Lord. She's She is not leaving any rock or bush unturned. Amen. She wants that whole light island saved in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Keep Tamanga over in Zambia, Africa lifted up in your prayers along with Moguda Stanley. Amen. You can find him on Facebook. And let me see where I wrote his name. I want to spell that for you. Amen. Hang on one sec. I got him written down here somewhere. Amen. And it is Mu. M-U-G-O-D-A. Mu. Goda Stanley, amen, been following him for many years myself, and he's a pastor in a church over there in Uganda, but I mean, that man has a fury in his heart looking for the lost, and you can see him out there in the marketplaces just looking for the lost. He had one saved yesterday, and hundreds heard that gospel message, amen, let's keep Mugoda Stanley lifted up in our prayers along with, and you guys got to pray hard for Anna and her son Jacob and Maddie and Morgan and Chris and Micah all down under in Australia, amen. Keep Nick and Patricia lifted up in your prayers with their prison ministry and all they're doing, uh, sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ in those men and women prisons and everywhere else they go, amen. Keep Pastor Mike. Uh, of the Victory Outreach in Fort Worth, Texas, truly a deliverance ministry. Keep him, his wife and family and relatives, and that ministry lifted up in our prayers, along with Pastor Joel and his wife. Pastor Joel serves under Pastor Mike and is a big part of that Victory Outreach as well. As a prison ministry, he and his wife do six days a week. Amen. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers over there in Texas. Keep Coach Lowell Gecker. We call him Coach G, some of us. Amen. <laughs> keep Coach Gecker and Randy Lowe, Coach Lowe, <laughs> and their families, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers. Coach Gecker's lovely life, wife, Kay. Let's keep her lifted up in our prayers as well. Amen. Pray for Laura Bolin, Donna and her two sons, Harvey Carey and his wife, Rosie, Anthony and Jamal on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia, sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone who will listen. Amen. Keep Elena Vasquez and her son, Nelly Vasquez, her husband, Pablo Vasquez, and all their family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers. Pray for Rod, <laughs> my brother in Christ, Rod, and his grandma, Grandma Naomi, 98 years young, amen, and still on 
fire for the Lord. Hey, Grandma. Hallelujah. Keep my sisters Jan and Karen and my niece Elena. That's Jan's daughter and Karen's uh, son, my nephew Michael and his girlfriend and my auntie Annette lifted up in your prayers. I forgot to post pictures of our dinner the other night when I first got to meet Michael and his fiance. Amen. I'll get those uh, up after the uh, podcast here today. Pray for Sarah and Captain Haynes and their ministries. Amen. Pray for Minister Prophetess Mary Jo Mosley and her grandson Cameron and Jason. Amen. Pray for Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee. Pray hard for her son Lee. Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tex. Amen. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers. Might be under the weather. Didn't see them today, and we miss them tremendously. But let's pray hard for their grandson, Mateo. Amen. Total deliverance, healing, and restoration in his body, mind, heart, and spirit. Amen. Pray for Keith and Cheyenne, Ty and Patience, and their two children, Helena Gore. Amen. And Jay Clark. Ah, beat the kids today. We thank God for you, Jay Clark. And he made a good point. We were saying that uh, uh, in the letters, the love letters that we covered in the study in the book of Revelation, amen, I think I described him as a threat to these churches that had lost their love for Jesus, amen, had gone astray and the Lord is telling them, come back to me or else. <laughs> and Jay called it a promise. Not a threat. This is a promise. <laughs> I like that, Jay. Thank you for that. Amen. Keep uh, Ashley and her family, her entire family, especially her daughter, lifted up in our prayers. That whole family is under demonic attack. And we just ask that the Lord will build a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around her family and that they would catch on fire for the Lord. And come to him. <coughs> we pray that this demand, demonic attack stops right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that those demons would cease and desist right now. Leave in the mighty name of Jesus. That her family may be free to come to Christ. And embrace that cross. Amen. And uh, give their all for Christ for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, and that her daughter would have a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around her. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, keep Ladera. Thank you for coming to church today with us, Ladera. Keep Ladera and her entire family lifted up in our prayers. They going through y'all, especially that miracle granddaughter that her granddaughter would just catch on fire for the Lord, open up her heart to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be saved, healed, delivered, set free, rendered heaven-bound in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And we're praying the same thing for Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and her daughter. Very same thing for her daughter in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Pray for Lucia and Sasha. Hallelujah. We thank God for the both of you. And just know in your hearts, we are here for you. Reach out when you need us, and we will be there for you. Unless <laughs> you call during the podcast. Then I don't know if you want to come up here live with us. But let's keep Lucia's sister, Martina, lifted up in, her, in our prayers, along with her brother, John. Amen. And we're praying that Sasha will get in her new place and it will be safe and wonderfully repaired and beautiful and that she will love it and meet new on-fire Christians in that new neighborhood in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Keep April lifted up in our prayers along with her children Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie, her husband John, her nana Sandy Hill from cancer in the mighty name of Jesus, her prayers that her whole family will be saved. Amen. And catch on fire for the Lord. 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray for our kids. Got me on that one, Donna. Keep Donna Love lifted up in our prayers and her prayers that the Lord will move her entire family into a new home and that her entire family be saved. Amen. Done. Done. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Keep Jerry and Nikki and Antonio lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Along with our Jesse. Keep Jesse lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And uh, we're praying hard for Jesse's family, his mom and his uncle. Amen. And especially, oh, I forgot. Uh, he's got a cousin. That's sick. We prayed for him in church today. Heal in the mighty name of Jesus. And I think Bert just called in. I can't find Tim. You there, Bert? Hey, uh. Hey, we're just getting into our podcast. We're still in our prayer list. Wasn't that a wonderful, wonderful, powerful movie of the Lord I, Jesus I, in service I, today? I just got to say this, uh. Come on. People act like God is not still doing miracles, and we witnessed one today in yes. Jesus' name. We yes. watched a man walk up out of there, <laughs> not the same way that he came in. That man came in hunched over, <clears throat> laying on the ground during the whole service. That's he had right. A cane. He, he had, had a cane. cane. He couldn't walk. But when he left up out of there, he threw that cane on the floor, walked up out of there with his head held high. Yes, he did. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told him about that. Now, what you did, you just confirmed that what I just shared with him is true. He came in where he came. He didn't leave where he came. <laughs> he left it in the center. Amen. He Praise on God. That floor the whole service. He couldn't even sit up during service. No. No, I saw him back there, and I was wondering what was going on with him. The Lord drew. A lot, of, a lot of the campers there today. And yeah. during the service, I'm sneaking peeks at them. I don't know if anybody saw me. But I'm just letting the Lord minister to my spirit of who he wanted to break the chains off today. The Lord gave me that word in Acts uh, chapter 12 about yeah. those chains that held Peter in a place he didn't want to be. Yes. And a lot longer that he wanted to be there. A lot of these campers have been out there in them streets a long oh. time. And the Lord oh. it, the to Lord's today. sick of the state of his precious people and where Satan has them. And they're comfortable in those chains. But the chains broke off today. I heard them crashing to the floor in the spirit. Ooh, I just the thank the Lord. I thank him. I just thank him. For freeing his people. Amen. Chain Amen. of addiction came off today. Chains of illness came off today. I mean, the Lord got busy, y'all. Amen. He showed out today. Oh, he showed up and showed out. I just thank God for all that he's doing for his people. And as we're going into these last days, I, I caught it today in service. They can't come into these last days in bondage. They can't come into these last days broken, sick. How are they going to run? How are they going to go out to minister to others in the state that they're in as we're running for our lives? Because it's going to be bounties on our heads, the Christians, them people. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They won't take the mark. We'll get them. We'll offer a reward. You see, so as we're running for our lives and running into others that don't have the mark, that haven't taken that mark yet, we can proclaim this, uh, this true gospel of Jesus Christ, and they can be saved and repent of their sins and be run with us, run with the warriors, amen? And uh, the Lord will keep us all safe through this tribulation, and we're going to heaven. We're going to see him coming on the clouds, amen? But uh, touch and agree with me. Where were we? We have Dominique Moore, Billy. No, I didn't finish this one. Billy Moore, ES from YouTube. But let me get back to uh, Lene. Lene's our truth warrior, prayer warrior. Okay, 
and she's been with this ministry since we arrived up here in Rockland. Amen? And she's exposing every lie with God's truth. That's what she does for God's kingdom. Amen? And her and her son have come down with this latest edition of this virus. I won't say any more about it. And it ain't feeling good. So we just lift her up right now. I let her know that we be praying for her worldwide. That this too shall pass. She's coming out of this better than she went in. Amen. And this will not. This will not affect her. In perhaps the ways that it was intended to. We plead the blood of Jesus over her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And we claim her healing right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Keep Drina lifted up in your prayers. And she came in. She came in toward the ends of the service. I guess she got so excited watching it online. She said, nope, I'm going down there. Amen. And so she blessed us. And we thank God for her healing in her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And we pray peace. I said a spirit of peace and comfort into her heart and mind. And so as she's ministering hard in her occupation, that all would be saved and fall in love with Jesus and start expressing his love in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Pray for Grant and my boy Brian. We're praying that Brian's going to catch on fire with for the Lord like never before. Get closer to him in his personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Get in that word and catch on fire like never before in Jesus' precious and mighty name and surrender it all to the Lord that he can be all that he can be for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep DM faith lifted up in your prayers. Their prayer is they're asking the Lord for salvation for their entire family. Done right now. Salvation in your home in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Keep Bert's ministry, trackside ministries lifted up in your prayers. As you know, this coming Saturday, we're talking six days from now, we're going into the project. If you're in the Sacramento area, come on out. What's what's the name of that project development, uh, Bert, that we'll be going to next Saturday? You got an address? Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell them if they're in the Sacramento area where we'll be. We're going in at noon to 6, noon to 7. Say that again, huh? What what's the time of the event this coming Saturday and the address? If they're in the Sacramento area, how can they catch up with us and come out and help feed? We got 200 burgers and hot dogs and chips and drinks, and we're going to pray for people. There's a baptismal pool. You can get saved here and delivered and baptized in Jesus' name at this event. Amen. We need lots of prayer warriors. We've got yeah. many ministries joining with us. Where is it in Sacramento that we're going to be in case they're in this area or want to come? All right. Up? So the gospel, the gospel event will be held Saturday. Um, the, the theme of the gospel event is called Here for the One. Here for the One. We're coming out for one soul at a time. Yeah. Uh, we come out for the one, and it will be held at on Saturday, September 30th. Yeah. From 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah. And the address is 240 CB Circle, Sacramento, California, 95818 Marina Vista. Praise so God. Again, one more time. The address is 240 CV Circle, yeah. Sacramento, California, mm -hmm. 95818 Marina Vista. It's right off of 5th and Broadway. If you're in the area, I encourage you to come out and come see what God is doing because people will be there giving their life to the Lord. I believe people will be giving, dedicating their lives 
we'll be baptizing people in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we're just going to be out there setting the captives free. Amen. And the commission. Yay! Yes. The commission's yes. going to be there. Every single member of the commission will be there. And they are going to be praising God with that gospel rap that they do. And, I mean, it's going to be off the chain. I'll be there giving my testimony. Bert's going to be there ministering and testifying. So just come on out and spend the afternoon with us. Now, if you can't come, you're in another country. <laughs> we understand. Gear up. Laura Lai, who we're about to pray for, has come up with a set-free clothing line to benefit and support this ministry. Gear up with us. We're going to be geared up for this event. Amen. You can gear up, too. Get your favorite. I mean, she's added so many different designs and hoodies and shirts. and uh, 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 I mean, just go on the site. You'll see it on my page, and she's adding to it daily. Amen. And you can support us and gear up and represent your faith for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, keep Laura alive. Lift it up in your prayers. I mean, she is getting revelation. She's getting victory. She's in a new place with the Lord right now. She just finished the fast. But there is warfare over there at that house. Amen. And keep her husband, Kenny, who I got yeah. to talk to. I tell you, I got to talk to him. He was making breakfast. And I was hungry. But I was getting ready to do a podcast. So I couldn't go eat. And he couldn't send one of them drones with a plate. So they got to eat. I got to be with you guys. But keep her husband, Kenny, lifted up in your prayers, as well as Sasha and Sienna. Did I say it right, Sienna? Sienna. Sienna. Amen. We got to pray hard for Bert's family. Amen. And Laura is is right there being the priest in that family, right in the middle of it, battling every demon that comes against her family. And victory is happening. Let's pray hard for Sasha that which she will allow the Lord into her heart. I mean, open the door of her heart all the way. Get saved and healed and delivered and set free. Fall in love with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A real personal relationship. Be eager and to get in this word and get this powerful life-saving, life-changing life rearranging word into her heart and life and spirit. Amen. And come out with us and be that warrior looking for the lost, looking for the one. What do you think that looking for the one that Bert just told you about? Looking for the one is what Jesus said to do. You got 99 on the hill in your pasture, but one is lost. We go out to look for that one until we find them. We don't go out for a couple hours and say, well, couldn't find them. I'm up, my, my feet's tired. I'm hungry. I'm coming back. The Lord said, look until you find them. He'll lead you to them. Amen. And that's what every one of our events is. If we can just get one, we were a success out there. Amen. Amen. And the Lord Amen. always makes a way. We're going to get that one or more. Amen. <laughs> in Jesus' name, and I'm so excited for this event this Saturday. Amen. We got one today, huh? Yes, we got one Brother today. Kenny gave his life to the Lord today. Yes. And that's what I truly believe. Once once he gave his life to the Lord, God yeah. healed him. God, God healed, healed him. God showed yeah. him his power right then and there. Right then and there to let Kenny know, I'm real, and I love you, and I'm yeah. concerned about you. And I know you've been limping around. I know you've been in pain. Watch me work. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for coming to the cross yeah. and asking me to forgive your sins. I've been waiting for you, Kenny. Now look what I got for you, Kenny. Hang on. You might want to put your seatbelt on because we're going for a ride, Kenny. Amen. Oh. <laughs> and they, they, they turned the corner today. <laughs> in Jesus' car, Kenny and the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, pray for my boy, John Fowler. Amen. And keep uh, Scott Woodall lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And we just thank God for you, Scott. 
anxiety gone in your mind and heart in Jesus' name. Amen. And your wife. We're just praying for your wife that she would also open up her heart so that so the Lord Jesus can enter into her life in a very real and powerful way and share with her his love, his gospel, and his truth. Fill her with her Holy Spirit that she too may fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and become one with him and that she would be up there in heaven with us rejoicing when we hit, when our feet hit them golden streets, amen? We're going to make some noise, amen? And your sister, Scott, we pray complete healing and deliverance in her life. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, hallelujah. Pray for Veronica and her family and situations, Becca, and her family and situations, Michelle Bowman and her family and situations. Pray for Precious and Eric. Oh, our lovely Thunder Twins. We just thank God for the Thunder Twins. Completely healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus, precious and mighty name, and completely delivered in every area of their lives. And that process is going on now. And I just can't wait for him to come out. You're going to have a dynamic duo in these Thunder Twins on fire for the Lord. Amen. In just a minute, in Jesus' precious and mighty name, God bless his Thunder Twins. Amen. Keep Tim. I don't know where Tim is. I think he passed out. Okay. I know he was working hard through the night. I talked to him earlier this morning. Can't reach him now. Yeah. Okay, I, would like to add, I would like to add Patience and Kai and their two children to the prayer list. We already did. Okay, oh, yeah. amen. That was on another sheet. Yep, we already prayed for them. Amen. And we're praying that the Lord himself would reveal himself to them in a very real and powerful way. And that he would come into their heart with his love. Because they need, they need his love. To love those two kids that are dragging around in them streets. Amen. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking as we all were ministering and blessing them. Okay. In the condition that they're in. Y'all pray hard for them. Because they've been out on the streets with those kids for over a year. And the, and the Lord put Bert and Jennifer into their lives. And they... Amen. They just basically slapped Jennifer and Bert in the face and didn't even say thank you and, and um, went on about their uh, uh, bondage life. They're in bondage. They're in bondage. But the chains were to came off today had they been in that service. Yeah. Yes. But no, they'd rather stay out in those streets and drag okay. those kids with them okay. getting high. Get not. We got to pray hard for Ty, Patience, and those two, two li little precious children of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, Amen. Pray for Tim. Now, I got some bad news, and we need to pray on this. Amen. You know, they were going to be calling Tim Paw Paw, okay? But his daughter lost the baby overnight. And so uh, let's keep Tim, his lovely wife, Heather, and Jaden, and it was Haley carrying the baby, and I believe she's in the hospital now in pain. Amen. And we just want to keep Tim's family lifted up in our prayers. And that little Haley, the Lord would heal her body, her heart, her mind, her soul, her spirit, and that he would replace this loss with his comfort. His comfort. Yes. His peace that passes all understanding. Because the Lord got that child. And she will see that child. But we're praying for her salvation. Her healing. Her deliverance. Yes. Her freedom in Christ. And for her to catch on fire for the Lord as well. That yes. she will. Get up into heaven and be able to mother her child in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Pray for Christina with a K. 
down there in beautiful downtown Mississippi. Amen. With Christ in her heart and Christ in her name, pray for her sons, her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every wonderful thing that God has put on Christina's heart to do for his kingdom in Jesus' name. Pray for Giovanni. Sophia, 11-year-old girl diagnosed with something no 11-year-old should ever have to hear. We're praying for a miraculous healing right now in her body in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Keep Paul down under and Maddie's mom, Tina, down under. Lift it up in our prayers. Along with Nancy Bullock, Stephanie Deppa, amen. Zara down under and her husband, Ali, their children, Aran and Baran. Uh, Julie down under, Margaret down under, Paris down under, Tyler down under, Wang Guyen from Melbourne, Australia down under, Angelica Lewis down under, Zarlia down under, all in Australia. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers, along with Maria and David Rivers and Whitney and Cherry and their daughter. Pray for Laura from YouTube and her daughter, Micah, completely delivered and set free, healed, on fire for the Lord in Jesus. Precious and mighty name we declare over Micah. Pray for Jean from YouTube, Ro uh, Robert Minnick, Christine Starr, uh, our man Ken and Ryan and Ekina from Houston, Texas, and Apostle Stephen and his ministry over in Nairobi, Kenya. Amen. Pray for Martin in Paris and Chester, Julie and Carly, John, Joshua, and John and Mariano, Antonio's wife, Christina Bradford. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. And I want to tell you something. You guys have been praying hard. That girl's on fire for the Lord right now. You don't even want to go no, near her house. Smoke detectors going off upstairs, downstairs, in the bathroom. That girl is on fire. They got a fire fire truck down the street looking for the fire because everybody's talking about the fire. But they can't. They, all they see is a glory cloud. They can't find no smoke. Keep her lifted up in your prayers, along with Micah Osborne, David Ahmad, Eddie Valentine, Justin Gonzalez, Christopher, who has been suffering with a mental health crisis. We declare right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, a sound mind filled with love and power, a Christ-like mind in yes. Jesus. Precious and mighty name for Christopher. Amen. Pray for Michael Hansen. Norman, Aaron, Andy, Mike, Trenton Barnes, who just gave his life to Christ. Welcome to the family. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray for Nicholas, Marvin Cage, Helen Geddes, Jermaine Cryer, uh, Wayne over there with uh, Jerry. And they are just so excited doing an awesome uh, thing in that program. And Jerry is hungry for the Word of God. He can't wait for Bible study. It's not just hearing it. He's digging and wanting to know more and more and more. And we just thank God. And Wayne's helping him. Amen. And yeah. keep Barney, uh, Scott Woodall's new hiking buddy, up in our prayers. We're praying that Barney will open his heart and let the Lord Jesus in. He will get saved. He's 91 years old with cancer. Talking about he don't believe in Jesus. We're praying that he will believe in Jesus. He will accept Jesus, okay. repent of his sins, and that the Lord would take away that cancer, heal Barney, and he'll have a long life on fire with Scott preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray for Hattie and Rebecca Coleman, Leah Henderson, who suffered two murders recently in her family. Let's make sure we keep her lifted up in our prayers. My girl, Charlie. And we want to pray for Trina. Now our prison prayer, okay? We declare that the Spirit of God, that you have uh, given freely. I'm sorry. Let's start that over. Heavenly Father, we declare that the Spirit of God that you have given freely to the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Salano Prison and every prison 
causes them not to walk in a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, and a sound mind, self-discipline. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that because of your presence in them, every place that the sole of their feet shall step becomes consecrated ground, holy ground, and belongs to them. Your presence has caused them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters the prison walls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk in the example of the love that Hosea showed towards Gomer, even in her unfaithfulness to him. We choose to move in an abundance of love, showing respect for all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We follow your example, Father, and walk in the way of love. Thank you, Lord, for continually breaking chains off the hearts and setting the captives free. Receive the prayers of incense rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on the prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare and thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, protection, and the peace of God rules in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen. And amen. And I got another prayer to add to that. I thank you, Lord, for Bert, myself, Gail, and Pat, and Trina, and all of us in this ministry. Tone, he got his gate pass. Amen. For the opportunity to go into Salado Prison. And I ask, Lord, that you would use us for your glory. In yes. Jesus' precious and mighty name. Bert was so excited coming out of that prison, he almost ran home. Uh, <laughs> it was hard to get him in the car. He was just jumping around. <laughs> Amen. Who's ready for a word from the Lord? Amen. Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 9. Now, Bert got him a new Bible. Oh, you act like he don't have a new short. Now, See, I looked at his Bible. It looked so pretty. It was brand wow. new and shiny. And then I look at mine. I got the same edition. He got the new living translation for his yeah. ease with the Life Application Study Bible. Powerful, powerful teaching tool. Been using it for years with kids. But I looked at mine. Now, mine ain't torn and uh, duct taped like some of my past Bibles. Amen. But I got sticky notes, and my little shine, he got the gold, I got the silver. I don't know if I can even see the silver on mine no more. But <laughs> he got a pretty new sword, but I guarantee you, and I wanted to tell him at church this morning, it's going to look like mine shortly, because <laughs> I know he's going to be all up in this Bible. Amen? And it's going to look new and pretty in a minute. Amen? Praise God. So in chapter 9, what we're addressing right now is what's going around on the Internet. It's called a last day prophecy, if you all have seen it. And it declares that there's going to be three solar eclipses. One happened in 2017 or 19 or something. And there's two that are going to happen real quick here. And one falls on a Jewish holiday and that Jesus is coming next month. That's what the well, prophecy said. <laughs> where we're, we're, we're nine and one? We are, I am going to go, let me see, yes. We're going to go in Revelation chapter nine. And what I'm going to bring out here, because what we already covered, y'all and Bert, were the seal judgments, all of them. And nowhere in Matthew or in the seal judgment is there talk of an eclipse. There will be signs in the heavens. That's my point. Because they took this scripture, Bert, that Jesus said that there will be signs in the heavens, and they're calling the signs in the heavens an eclipse, three eclipses, and one falls on a Jewish holiday. That, an eclipse, not going to make anybody repent. But what we read yesterday in today's, I mean, in yesterday's podcast, going through the 
uh, we well, what we did yesterday was the first four of the trumpets. We're going to go into the three woes or the three terrors, depending on which translation. The King James calls it the three woes. Amen. We're going to do that today. We went through the seal judgment. We saw signs in the sky. Not one of them resembled an eclipse. <laughs> Are you with me? So we're yeah. disproving what's going on around online, giving people the opportunity from YouTube and Facebook, if they have questions about this study, we finished the book of Revelation. We're just going through the signs again, like a review, so that you'll know that this mess that they're telling, the lies they're telling, the prophet liars, the test the liars, the false preachers, false teachers, what they're teaching is wrong. Stick to the word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. The truth is in this word, and it's going to happen just the way. Oh, you act like it's not going to happen the way God said it's going to happen. Jesus declared it. I believe it, and that's it. I'm not fussing with these folks. Amen? But I thank you for bringing it to our attention and questioning how this fits in. It doesn't. And we're going to prove that because in chapter 9 here in the book of Revelation, verse 1, it says, Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet. This is the first terror, y'all. Let's get yeah. into this. Close your eyes and feel this. See this. Okay? It says, then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen to earth from the sky. Now, does that sound like an eclipse? <laughs> okay, watch what happens. And I saw a star that had fallen to earth from the sky. That's a sign in the sky. Ain't no eclipse there. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. Now, we went over this before. Now, in the King James, it says, or the abyss or the underworld. That's the devil. No. This, we believe, is an angel. Okay, you could be right. Some believe that. Let me go to the study guide. It is not known whether this star that fell from the sky is Satan, a fallen angel, one of his demons, Christ, or a good angel. A good angel. Most likely. It is a good angel because the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit is normally held by Christ. Who holds the key to life and death? <laughs> Jesus himself. So he might have whispered in the throne room, come here, angel. And it was temporarily given to this <laughs> uh -huh. other being from heaven. That's right. Whoever this may be. He operates under God's control and authority. That's right. The bottomless pit represents the place of the demons mm -hmm. and of Satan, the, the kingdom king of, of the demons. Demon. Yeah. Now watch this. So that first terror is not an eclipse. Let's see what happens with this. It's a. It looks like a star. This angel is coming down so fast. Amen? But watch this. Verse 3. Then locusts came from the smoke. No, no, no. We got to back up to 2. Amen? When he opened it, smoke poured out as though from a huge furnace and the sunlight and air turned dark from the smoke. Now that's not an eclipse. Uh, an eclipse it's going to get dark for a few seconds, a few moments. Amen. And then the moon and sun are moving. The earth is rotating. So it only lasts a few minutes. Amen. But watch this. Then locusts came from the smoke and descended on the earth. And they were given the power to sting like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass or plants or trees. But only the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were told not to kill them, but to torture them for five months with pain, like the pain of a scorpion sting. In those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Now, does that sound to anyone out there 
And you can write in the comment. Does it sound like a solar eclipse? Lunar eclipse? <laughs> Are you with me? Let's, let's see about the sixth trumpet. Go down to verse 13. The sixth trumpet brings the second terror. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice speaking from the four horns of the gold altar that stands in the presence of God. And the voice said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. Then the four angels who had been prepared for this hour and time, I'm sorry, and day and month and year were turned loose to kill one third of all the people on earth. See, these are partial judgments the trumpets, and the seals. So we've already lost a quarter in the seals, and now we're losing a third of what's left of the Earth's population. So now over half the Earth's population has been destroyed by these signs from the sky, from the heavens. There will be signs in the heavens, yes. And these kind of signs, you don't kill up a bunch of folks. That might get somebody on their knees and repenting of their sins and turn into Christ. An eclipse? I ain't never heard of nobody <laughs> get repenting because an eclipse occurred. And what Jewish holiday is caused repenting? And the fact that an eclipse lands on a Jewish holiday, how's that going to bring repentance? These are judgments that Jesus was talking about with the signs in the heaven, the signs in the sky, you see? And it's judgment, his judgment on this wicked, sin-filled, evil, broken world, on those that will not repent. He's given them a chance to repent, but he gave them a reason to repent too. He's also cleaning the church. He got the big broom, <laughs> okay? All the fakers, yeah, the false flaggers, the gummy bears, the lukewarm. The, the temple had four projections, hmm? one at each corner. <coughs> these were called the horns of the altar. Yes, we did this in our study. That's why I'm racing through, Bert. We're just yeah. racing through. We're looking for an eclipse. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just reading it to my wife. Yeah, yeah. See, the, we're... We're looking for an eclipse. They said there's going to be three eclipses. And the last one falls on a Jewish holiday. And Jesus is coming next month. We're looking for that. Because they said in this last day prophecy that Jesus said they used scripture to bring this to life. They said Jesus said there'll be signs in the sky. He did. We're going through the signs. <laughs> I ain't seen an eclipse yet. If any of no. you guys out there if I missed it, <laughs> please type it in in the comments. Amen. I don't see it in my book. I'm sorry. I said I don't see it in my book. Right. We all got the word. That's why I'm telling you guys: read your word, know the truth. Can you tell the difference between a lie and the truth? We have to going into this tribulation because what did Jesus say? The deception. It's going to be so great. The anguish of these days is going to be so great. There'll be, there's no other time to compare it to in human history. It'll be worse than at any time during human history and never to occur again this bad. It's going to be bad. He said he had to cut the time. He had to shorten the time for the sake of the elect. The deception is going to be so bad. We need to pray now before we go in for a gift of discernment. You need to be in this word and know what the word says is going to happen so that you won't be deceived, you won't be fooled, and end up taking that mark, amen, and uh, worshiping that beast. You do it. You will burn in hell, amen? I don't care how long you've been saved. You can come from a whole family of folks been saved. Way back to your great, 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 great grandmama. Don't care. You take that mark, you're done. You're going to burn in hell. Know that. Not, gonna, not for a day. Not for, <laughs> days, not for a week. Forever. 
Come on, Bert. Amen. So watch this. Uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. Um, verse 17. No, we can back up. We'll get we'll get some of this. Okay. Uh, release the four angels. Okay. One third of the, all the people on earth are dead. Now watch this. Verse 16, and I saw the size of their army, which was 200 million mounted troops. And in my vision, I saw the horses and riders sitting on them. Don't sound like an eclipse to me. The oh, riders back, wore... Back, back, huh? back up to 15 again. Back up to 15 again. You no, see an no, eclipse 16. there? Then the four it's angels 16. who had been prepared for this hour and day and month and yeah. year were turned loose to kill one-third of all the people on earth. On earth. And then 16 reads, I heard yeah. the size of, of their the army. army. That's which right. was 200 million mounted troops. Yeah, yeah. Now that's power if you can hear yeah. the size of an army. Amen. Because if you saw an army coming at you and there was 200 million of them, how are you going to count it? But John heard. Maybe the Lord whispered in his ear, John, yes, Lord. There's 200 million of them. Wow, Lord. <laughs> they didn't have calculators left yet. Amen. So, and they didn't have no smart wall. <laughs> uh, can you go down and read the study guide of that, uh, of uh, verse 16 real quick? Just read it out. to. I, 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 I think they should hear this. In John's day, this number of mounted troops in an army was inconceivable. But today, there are countries and alliances that could easily amass this many soldiers. This huge army, led by the four demons, will be sent out to destroy one-third of the Earth's population. But the judgment is still not complete. Ooh-wee. Let's see if it's going to be the eclipse next. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 17 says, And in my vision I saw the horses and the riders sitting on them. The riders wore armor that was fiery red and dark blue and yellow. The horses had heads like lions, and fire and smoke and burning sofa billowed from their mouths. One third of all the people on earth were killed by these three plagued by the fire and the smoke and the burning sulfur that came from the mouths of the horses. Don't sound like no solar eclipse to me. No, their power no, was no. in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails had heads like snakes with the power. I said the power. Oh, you act like I didn't say power to injure people. This ain't no joke, y'all. No. This this some serious stuff. Amen. But they're not gonna hurt us. We gotta see them. Yes. But the ones who got the mark, we don't want yeah. the mark. The one who got the mark, oh, they finna get tore up from the flow up. Yes. Amen. As God is passing judgment. Now there will be many that haven't taken the mark, but they don't know Jesus either. Mm. I they, feel bad for them. And that's the ones we're after. That's right. that low bearing fruit because they're going to yeah. be running to it and we're going to run in them in the, into them on the way to the little hiding spots and we're going to run into them and we're going to be like, dude, thank God you ain't got a mark. And they're going to be like, thank God. Well, thank you that you don't have a mark. What? Oh, oh, you must be those Christians we're hearing about. Yeah. And right now you might want to join us because Jesus is right around the corner and he's fitting to come. And let me tell you what, you know what that last terror was, right? <laughs> you know what that last judgment was, right? Well, the news said it was global warming. Yeah, they lying. It was this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Keep running with us. Because in the next three months, this is going to happen. Because we give them the next sign. And when it does, I guarantee you, they're going to be on their knees begging to get into God's kingdom. Begging the Lord, to forgive them of every sin and mistake they've ever made in their lives, pledging their hearts to their last breath to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
there still will be time for repentance. So we got we got to check their hands, homie. Because <laughs> if they got the mark, we can't let them in our camp. <laughs> Amen. No, no That's the enemy. All right. Let no enemies in the camp. That's right. You see. So uh, let's see. That doesn't sound like no solar eclipse. Let's go down to. Uh, we need the third terror. That was the second. Here comes the two witnesses. Now, if you'll turn your Bibles to Revelation 11 and 15. Amen. The seventh trumpet brings the third terror. Let's see if this is the eclipse with the Jewish holiday. Amen. So Revelation 11 and 15 says, Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. You know what's happening here. The seventh trumpet ushers in the first of the bold judgments, just like the seventh seal brought in the first of the trumpet judgments. So watch this. Heaven's all excited. Amen. But just because we're running out of time, we're going to skip the worship that's going on in heaven. Heaven's excited because they know that we're only seven judgments away and the Lord is going to return to the earth to bring back those in heaven, their mamas, their daddies, their sons, their daughters, their uncles, their family, their loved ones. You see, heaven's excited now because they know the partial judgments are over Amen. And here come those final, full and complete judgments. These last bold judgments, and we'll go into them tomorrow looking for an eclipse on Amen. the Jewish holiday. <laughs> okay? But verse 19 said, Then in heaven the temple of God was opened, and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside the temple. Lightning flashed, thunder crashed and roared, and there was an earthquake. And a terrible hailstorm. Hail. Now that doesn't sound. Now that's a sign from heaven. Where does hail fall from? Heaven. From that's a sign in the sky. It doesn't look no like clip. an eclipse. But if the Bible says it's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. And that is going to usher in the last bowl judgments, which we'll go through. We're going to look for this eclipse. We got to prove that these liars are online. We're going to prove that they're not going to tell God what to do. And they're not going to line up scripture from the Old Testament and mix in Jewish holidays and say what Jesus said in the New Testament. You see how they did? They're preying on people who don't know their word. They're going to try to confuse you with brilliance. They're going to talk like they have authority, and they know what they're talking about. All the while, it's just a well-dressed-up lie. That's what liars do. Dress it up to make themselves seem like they're somebody. Whereas when we're preaching the truth, we're nobody. We're making God somebody. We're putting Jesus first, a true deliverer of this true gospel in Jesus Christ. Don't you ever think it's about me. This word is him, his heart on paper, and I'm just reading it to you. Amen? But they're trying to bring glory to themselves and sell books and get views, telling a lie. And they're going to sit there with every confidence as they bring this mess. That's why we're asking, can you tell the truth from a lie? So we'll get into this tomorrow, the uh, last seven judgments, to disprove this lie. And anything else you find out there on the on, online that you'd like to interject into this conversation as we're discussing our completion, we studied the book of Revelation, okay? But you may have questions, comments. You may want to go back over something. It's okay. We'll go back. We want you. The audience that God has drawn here, 
to be to to gain his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of everything that these last days to offer. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Okay. Some people think, I don't want them to think, you know, that it's a silly. There is no silly question. We want you to get understanding. If you miss something, if we misstated something, let's get to the heart of that and answer that question biblically by what Jesus said. Amen? So that we have his wisdom, knowledge, understanding into going into this word. If Tim were here, he would tell you the only stupid question is the question you refused to ask. And how do you know the question on your heart isn't a question on thousands of people's out there's heart? You got a question about anything we've gone through. Please, we're begging you, ask it. Amen? Glory. Hey, uh, Bert, we're done with our study today. Before we pray for those that uh, the Lord has drawn here, is there anything on your heart or Jennifer's heart that you'd like to share? Um, just to be obedient to the Lord mm-hmm. and everything that the Lord has for us. Yeah. We're the ones that keep him from giving it to us. Mm-hmm. So let's stop getting in God's way and allow him to do be God. Sell out. Just sell out. Throw your hands up. Surrender. That's what he's saying. Assume the position. <laughs> you did it for 5 You did it for the Popo. Through shot in some neighborhood. When the cops told you, assume the position, you know what to do. Why we won't well, do that for the Lord, I don't we know. Watch, we witnessed today a man surrender his life to the Lord and get healed in the process. All right. Look so, at that. Miracles are still happening. Yeah. Stop questioning God. You know what's not in the Bible, Bert? What's that? There's one thing that's not in the Bible. You know what it is, Jennifer? That. Our opinion. Uh. <laughs> okay. God don't we need got, you. We got too much of it. God don't need you. And your opinion, he's after your heart. He wants you through and through. You're his creation. He handcrafted each and every one of us. He loves us with an everlasting love. And it's going to break his heart to lose any of us to that pit of hell. He doesn't want your opinion on what he can do and what he can't do. He just wants your love. And your surrender so he can prove to you, show you (laughs) exactly who he is and what he can do and what he is capable of if you would just invite him in your heart. Invite him into that situation you're in, that circumstance. You see? Oh, he'll prove the doctor's wrong. I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle of healing through my 19 years of ministry. You can't tell me he don't heal. He healed me of cancer. Go ahead, Jennifer. Yes. I said, yes, we've seen another one today, Lord. Yeah. And I'm a miracle. I just want to thank the Lord for being in control. Yeah. And for being in control of, of everything. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes, amen. If that's all from your heart, let's pray for each and every one of these. First of all, let's thank God for this powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word. And this opportunity to come forth freely and study this word. Thank you, Father, for making a way. Thank you for each and every one of these that you've drawn here with purpose. Bury this word in our heart. Give us your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we traverse through this word and bury it in our hearts with like barbed wire that we may carry it in our heart. In our heart. Can't be taken out of our heart. 
all the way through those pearly gates. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Father, you've drawn a lot of people here. And we thank you for each and every one of them. But you drew them here with purpose. And some of those that you've drawn here, they've got illnesses and diseases and diagnoses given to them by doctors. We just declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus, they are all, all of them, healed completely, totally, from head to toe in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some right now, of, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, some that you've drawn here are in bondage. They're addicted to porn or gambling or some sexual lifestyle, uh, drugs or alcohol, pills. You only know what, Lord. But you drew them here with purpose, and right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare every yoke broken, every stronghold torn down, every chain ripped off. Right now, yes, Lord. in Jesus, precious is mighty name, and we declare each and every one of you free in Christ, in Jesus, precious and mighty name. Some of them, Lord, are prisoners in their hearts, minds, souls. Spirits, bodies, emotions, circumstances, situations. Lord, they've been diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, uh, multiple personality disorder. There's so many names, Lord. But there's no name greater than the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus that those prison doors are open and the captives are set free. PTSD gone in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Anxiety gone right now in the mighty name of Jesus. PTSD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, I don't care what you call it, what they've diagnosed it to be called, gone right now. Now, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And some of them are in circumstances, situations. They're afraid to move. They're not happy where they're at. But they, the only thing they can see with their eyes is the situation getting worse if they try to do anything about it. But they're not seeing with your eyes. And we just ask that you touch their hearts, that they would trust you that you know how to set a captive free. And when you open up those prison doors and set a captive free, they are free indeed. And we declare that freedom right now in Jesus' name. Some are in very, very dark places, Lord. And they went in there on purpose and ain't coming up. They've been hurt so bad, Lord, they don't trust a soul on this planet. And they may not have even open up their hearts to you. Lord, <laughs> you are the light of the world that they wouldn't stumble. You are that bright and morning star. Go into that dark place they've crawled into, Lord. Light it up with fire in your glory. Reach down with that nail-pierced hand and pick them up out of that corner they're sulking in. Lift them up into your arms and just hold them and hug them and let them know you got them. And that they're okay. And that it's all right to come out into a new life lit up by you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, can you guys do Bert and Jennifer and Pastor Tim? A small favor. Do it for me, too. An itty-bitty favor. Have a nice day. A good day. A wonderful day. A glorious day. A magnificent day. A marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. See you tomorrow. <laughs>